In this tutorial, we'll just take a look at some factors you might consider if you decide to build your own boat scene. Uh, one is that uh, with the boat here, in general, we have all these edge loops that we can take advantage of because we built it with that multi-resolution subdivision. And so, for instance, if I go into edit mode here, I have the numbers turned on right now, and I press, or see, I'm in edge select, so I press alt, I can grab this whole edge all the way around the boat, which is nice, because or this edge like this all the way around. So I could just, then knowing that, I can also use this loop cut tool here, and I know it can get these kind of edges if I want. Where was that? Like that edge right there. And I can make a whole new series of edges as I want. But sometimes, maybe if I had wanted a, uh, you know, maybe I wanted to subdivide this up so I could put portholes in here. Well, instead of just subdividing a single face, what I'll sometimes do is I'll create more edge loops and build my, uh, you know, like the edges around the lip of the boat with more detail. And at the very end, then I'll subdivide an area because sometimes if you subdivide an area, then it's hard for your edge loop to find its way all the way around. Right, that's just one idea to consider. These numbers I have in here because um, earlier I had, you see how my boat is kind of skewed right here? Let me see if I pr bring up this point right there. See if I can look at it closer so you can see the numbers. And you can see if I just move it a little bit, my numbers, that's 0.556 on the one side. Well, they're basically, it's showing me the length between those two is off, so I knew I had goofed that up, and I can kind of adjust it using those numbers like we looked at in another lesson. I don't mind leaving it crooked for the moment. And then this mesh here is for the wave. A lot of times when you do these simulations, you want to try and use a small mesh because if you use a huge mesh for the ocean and you just subdivide the whole thing, your processing requirements just go way through the roof. So if, say, for instance, I want to try and simulate a scene where the boat is moving down the coastline. Instead of making a giant ocean and a giant coastline with buildings all to scale, I might come in over here like this and just add a plane to the scene and scale it up. I'll show you this little, this is not really a trick per se, but you'll see what I mean. I'll bring it up so it's about level with that. And I'll move it, I'll move it back so it's right about there. And then I'm going to put a little, I'll put a regular hemisphere light in the scene just for the moment. No, or maybe I'll just work in shaded mode for a second like that. And so then here's my boat, but then to simulate the movement of the boat, I'm going to go into here and I'm just going to subdivide this plane right up real quick. Alright, well that's good enough for starters. And then let me move it out of the way of, so he's not cutting there. Alright, so then when I'm in here then I'll go into plane selection like this, get rid of these guys and then maybe this will be these two first rows would be my beach or something like that. And then maybe I'll pick a bunch of things like that. Maybe that's a condo on the beach. Maybe that's the condo on the beach. Maybe that's another condo. Maybe that's a condo. Maybe this is a big condo. on the beach alright so these are just my buildings along the beach then I'm going to go and extrude them all into Z like this and then I just suddenly have my condos and then I'll, do, I'll diversify it a little bit make a couple of these a little bit bigger so they're not all the same and then I'll make this maybe I'll make this one a really tall condo whoops I didn't want that one alright and then you could do the same thing with your city back here 
to make your city. All right, so it's kind of flat shaded at the moment, but that's easy enough to fix. So then maybe your animation is some point of view. Well, I guess we're going to have to scale this up a little bit in Y. But what I do, you know, I'm going to have to, since my, I'm parented, all my vertices are parented there, it's scaling the boat as well. So I should have just, de uh, you know, unparented those first. But it's no big deal for the moment. We're just, you kind of give an idea. And then, uh, then to make the, you know, let's look at the surface. Now the surface is less subdivided relative to how it was. So let's just see what the wave will look like real quick. We'll go into. So it's going to be a slower wave, but it's still working. But now my view is down here, so I position my camera close up, but still my whole ocean surface is just this little itty bitty plane, nothing more, so I don't really have to do much. But let's see what happens if we subdivide this surface up a couple times. Since, since I'm not dealing with a huge plane, then I should be able to handle it. Now you can see, let's see, oh no, you can see it's already slow and down. Oh, well, that's because um, <laughs> that's because I have all these pinned. Now I have a lot more vertices in the center that it's going to affect it. So that didn't work, did it? All right, let's control Z one level at least. All right, let's try that. See if that'll work. Well, that's still wrong. So I'd have to change some of the uh, weights of the vertices in this scene. So I'm going to control Z that back out of there. All right, we'll try it with that. All right, we'll leave that. That's back to reasonable in that sense. And this actually makes it even a much bigger difference. If you use a dynamic paint surface instead of, I mean, yeah, if you use dynamic paint and use the waves in there, then the winds do not affect it. But the but what you can do is you can move the object along and have the object affect the waves and create a, uh, a wake with a boat. So both give you some advantages, but instead of doing anything like that, what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to grab this, grab this scene back here and I'll move, I'll move it over like this and just because I'll just you just so you get an idea I'll make that a location and then I'll take this and make th that a location like that and of course I'd have to scale the rest of the size of these out and then when I run it if I get the right view up here like this then then it'll make it look like your boats cruising along in the scene like that so we'll fix it up real quick just so you see it for sure. Edge select, see if I can get this edge and that edge, okay. And then I'm just gonna scale those on Y. All right, that should be enough to do it. And then as long, uh, as, long as my view, as long as I don't see the corners of my ocean now, which is just about right here. Okay. And we'll just highlight that light. No, that's not the light. All right, and let's run it. So then the scene goes by and it gives you the effect that the city's actually, that it's cruising down the coastline. All right, well, so it really then comes down to details, but at least my simulation surface is relatively small, and then I can still run it in real time and then get rid of the lines like that if I want, which I like to do. So then you can kind of see the whole thing. Yep, there it is. Cruising down the coastline. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.